Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This is our supercapacitor charging kit, and I'll be releasing a an assembly video this afternoon. You put this together yourself, and what you can do is you can charge uh, single supercapacitors to 2.5 volts or 2.7 volts, and you can charge uh, uh, series banks to uh, 5 volts or 5.4 volts and I'm going to show you how it's really easy to use so let's do a demonstration similar to our supercapacitor flashlight kit as soon as you plug it in if you have no supercapacitor added what will happen is as soon as you press the button and, and check your selection there's a bunch of different selection modes 1, 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 3, 4 those are the different charging modes so uh, if I choose 1 Relay turns on and off very quickly because the sensor realizes, hey, there's no load here. Um, so what you actually have to do is put a supercapacitor in here. Now your normal supercapacitor is going to have a rating of about um, 2.5 or 2.7 volts. Now you never want to charge to those exact voltages because you want to take care of your supercapacitors. So what I've done is I've programmed for the 2.5 volt charge. I've charged. I've set it to charge to say about 4.5 or 2.43 volts. So that'll prolong the life of your supercapacitors, which should be able to be charged hundreds of thousands of times. That's what makes supercapacitors so cool. So what I'll do is I'll put in this 2.7 volt capacitor, and we'll use that for the, to, uh, to demonstrate the 2.5 and 2.7 volt charges. And uh, there are also some test points on here, so you can probe uh, what your the voltages on your capacitors as you're charging them if you want. And I'll be showing you that with the digital multimeter. So let me just hook up this supercapacitor. It is a 60 farad supercapacitor, 2.7 volts, and we'll charge it. On your output terminal port, there's uh, actually a label saying cap plus and cap minus. Make sure that you place the negative lead of your supercapacitor in the cap minus port and your positive lead into the cap plus port. Now right here, there are some test points saying that'll show you what the voltage is on the capacitors. So uh, I've plugged in my 9 volt source and now I can choose what setting I want to choose. I want to uh, charge to by pressing this button. So let me set up my multimeter, and we'll see what ch charge is currently on the supercapacitor. As you can see, I've got 1.14 volts on it. So I'm going to hold the button down and get it in setting one. In setting one, once the LED blinks once, I just let go of the button, and the relay will turn on, and that means it's going to charge to about 2.43 volts. And as you can see. It continues to charge. So I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to turn it back on when we reach about 2.3 volts. This is about a minute and a half later. I'd like to add that the charge limit, the current limit, is, is limited by this big resistor here. And that gets really hot. So when you place it in the kit, you, as I, I'll tell you in the assembly video, you want to place it at least two and a half, three centimeters above the board and not to touch it while you're charging because it does get very hot because there's a lot of dissipation across it. So let's just watch. Good. So it charged to 2.3 volts. And then it tells you, okay, charged, we're good, by telling that LED, by flashing that LED. At which point you can press this button, LED will turn off. Now, the cool thing is, is after you've charged, you can leave it in there. There's no back powering. It's complete, this capacitor is completely isolated through this, this relay. So there'll be no back powering from the, uh, or no leakage from the capacitor through the internal circuitry. I was very careful during the design to ensure that. So what we'll do is now, if I want to put it in setting 2, charge it to roughly 2.6365 volts, we'll put it in setting 2. So you hold the button down, setting 1, setting 2, let go. And what it'll do is it'll charge to roughly 2.63 volts. It's a little bit, a little, it'll vary a little bit, but it's close. It'll never charge to 2.7. So... We'll just watch it because it won't take long. Now your power supply is 9 volts, uh, capable of sourcing at least uh, 650 milliamps. About 500 milliamps is going towards charging the supercapacitor, and the circuitry, the charge circuitry, requires about 100 millivolts. You don't want to use 12 volts. This is designed for uh, 9 volts. 8 volts will work, 
7 volts, you're pushing it, but the transformer that I'm using is 9 volts, capable of at least 1,000 milliamps, 2.65 volts. There we go. So I press the button. It's off. Now I'd like to add before I go into the other modes, that if I hold the button down for too long, setting 1, setting 2, setting 3, and setting 4, if I still hold on to it, then it doesn't do anything. It resets and waits for another uh, waits for another uh, uh, command from pressing the button. So let's set up a series bank, and we'll charge the series bank. What I've got here is two series uh, 60 farad supercapacitors, 2.7 volts. So max charge is 2.7 times 2, which is 5.4 volts. And our series capacitance is roughly 30 farads. So right now, when you, what I've done is I've taken this series bank, taken the positive lead, connected to the cap P or the cap plus lead, and the series negative lead, bank negative lead, and connected to the cap minus lead. Now, before you start charging, you don't have to do this, but this is just to show you. I can, I can put my my leads on the test points, just to show you. Right now, there is a series charge of 4.01 volts on it. So if we want to charge roughly to 5 volts, we're going to charge just under 5 volts, between um, 4.9 and 5 volts. So I'm going to put on setting 3. So hold the button down. 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and let go. And now it'll charge that to just under 5 volts. And again, that's to protect your capacitor bank. So it shouldn't take too long because you'll notice it's actually charging a bit faster. And the reason for this is because uh, the reason for this is because when you put capacitors in series, you lose capacitance. So as I said, we only have a, seri a series capacitance of about uh, 30 farads here. So it's going to charge faster to roughly 5 volts. Ooh, now I'm going to stop the video and I'll start it up again at a, f a charge of 4.8 volts. So we're almost there. There we go. So 4.95 volts. Then I'll stop it and I'll set it for our 5.4 volt range, uh, which will charge to roughly 5.32 to 5.35 volts. One, one, two, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. Let go of the button. Relay turns on. And it'll charge. So again, I'll stop the video one more time. And then we'll uh, end the video once I've shown you it charging to the full 5.3 something volts. So we're almost there. Oh, sorry. Now, it charged up to 5.3 volts, but what you'll notice is it might drop down a little bit. And that's because capacitors have a tolerance uh, for both capacitance and voltage range. So we might, so while these are 2.7 volts, they might be optimal at, say, 2.6 volts. Uh, and the capacitance, as I said, a plus or minus range of 10 to 20 percent. Capacitors aren't the greatest for tolerances. Uh, there are specialty capacitors that are you know, have a plus or minus of tolerance of 1%, but certainly not in the supercapacitor range. And we're talking about SMD components that are specially made for, say, uh, uh, cell phone devices and high-tech devices. So that's the supercapacitor charger kit. Um, if you uh, in the assembly video, what I'll do is you you can you have the option of using your five millimeter jack for power. Yeah, I have a nine again a nine volt 1,000 milliamp uh, transformer. But I'll show you in the assembly video how to uh, connect, say, an external w wire set so you can use a different kind of power supply in case you want to use that. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this interesting. My next kit will be uh, a PIR sensor kit, uh, an alarm system, actually, that picks up on the infrared spectrum of, in case uh, someone walks in the room, say a pet or a person, sets off a little alarm. Fun little kit. Voice recognition. We're behind schedule on it, but it's still coming. Uh, the layout and the schematic have been finalized, 
and I should have it within a month's time. So check us out soon. I'll be uploading videos all weekend.